Welcome back. So let's have a look at our code that I created in the location service right now because we're going to continue now expanding our application using the clean architecture. So first of all, let's have a look right here in the location service test. I added a couple of regions again. I have the constructor area. You can go check that. That's just constructor and properties. Then we have something I call the business logic area for the create function. So I called it create minus business logic. Now this is where we check for null exceptions. This is where we could check for different business logic specific things like maybe we wanted to change a currency and we expected the value to be something specific. But this is my idea that I'm going to have this area for the create functions business logic. And then I have another area that I'm going to call create functions business flow. Now the flow is something different because in the flow that is what we expect when I call the create function what should the create function then call in order to accomplish the job that I've asked it to accomplish, right? So let's have a look at that. Now, first of all, let's just expand this region and you can see the first one, let's try and start there and talk about this first method that we built together earlier on. Now, first step is I make a location validator right here as a mock and I do that using a helper class. So let's have a look at what that is all about. And it's just a basic new mock that is of the type location validator. I have the same for location repository mark that we're going to use later, but that's just creating these basic marks that we can use to kind of verify that things have happened in a certain way. Okay, let's try and go back to the other part of the code. There we go, the actual test right here. And um, the next step is I go and I call something on the helper called create verify. Now this is a pretty complex method. You can go and check it out yourself. What I do is I pass in the validator and I do that by actually, notice this is actually something I wrote, everything I wrote that. So I write the name of the property I wanna pass in because you can path in a repository, a local repository, location repository if you want to, like this, and you can also pass in a validator by just putting in validator. So the properties are there for you to use. You can just put in the name you want and then specifically, I explain now that I'm going to pass it into the validator property uh, parameter, sorry, of the create verify. And then I'm going to pass in the actual object, which is in this case going to be a location validator. There we go. Let's try and go into the create verify. So here you can see, you can pass in these two different properties and as default, I set them to null. So if you don't pass in anything at all in any of the fields, you'll get two null values right here. Then I go in and I test if this guy is null, then set it to something. And if this guy is null, then set it to something because I don't need the marks then for my code to work. The next thing I do is I create the service and the service gets these two different repositories in there, the repository for the location and the validator. That's what they get in there, the service. And the final thing is I kind of go and I validate, um, I, I create a valid location. And again, if you don't remember that one, the valid location is pretty much just creating a location with all the right properties right here. And the ID is blank for now. Sweet, let's try and go back to our test. There we go. So in the test helper here again, the final thing I do is of course I call the create function and when the create function is called, I just return the location that was just created right there. So that's kind of what the create verify does for me. But the cool thing is I can reuse this. So we're going to reuse it now in the next setup we, we need to do. Let's go back. What is the final step I do? I call something called the mock that I kind of passed into this create verify. I verify with this and then I get the location model uh, sorry, the location validator back, let's call it location validator. I call it location validator mock right here. So that's why it's L um, M. So location validator mock, that's a better name, I guess. And then I, I kind of specify that it should call default validation with the location one time. We all went th through this, but I changed the code. So I just want to show you guys how it works now because now I can reuse all of this. So step one is to create a new method where I wanna make sure that if I pass in a valid location parameter, it should call iRepository at method one time. So I kinda need to get a mock of the iRepository now. So let's try and do that. I'll make a var repository mock right here. Tori mock, there we go. And I'm going to create that by calling the helpers um, create mock right here or location repository mock. So now we have a mock available for the repository. Step two is I wanna kind of get a location that I can use to verify with. And in order to kind of call the create function to verify it, I just call that method called create verify. And this time I wanna pass in not the validator, but I wanna pass in the location repository that I just created as a mock. And of course I need to call the object to make the, the actual 
um, location repository implementation that the mark is faking for me. Okay, so the final thing I want to do is I want to validate the mark. So I'll say uh, repository mark dot, notice the name is bad, but it's not really important in this case. Then I want to verify with this location mark right here. And what I'm going to pass in this time is the verification is going to be location repository mark. That's what I'm going to get back. And let's just use that location repository mark to test that the add function is being called with the location and it's going to be called one time like this. Now you'll see there's an error right here. And that's of course, because right now the iLocation repository does not have an add function. So let's go and create that one. So I'll just create the new method test driven right here. There we go. It's going to pass in and that add function is going to pass in a location right now. It's not going to return anything yet, but I actually wanted to return something later on. Now this repository doesn't know about location because this is one of the dependencies we did not set up yet. So let's try and go to our primary, um, this guy, the primary port, infrastructure ports. We'll actually go and add a reference right here and we need access to the entity core right here. And no, again, notice that the test driven environment kind of sets me up to only add the dependencies that I need when I actually need them. So that's pretty neat. I'll add that right here. And now we have that available, the add function with the location. So now our unit test is at least capable of running right here. But let's try and run the unit test. And of course, we should fail now with a failing test. There we go. Now the failing test, of course, make sure that um, that right now I'm not calling the add method in the repository. And again, see right here, it says, I expect you should call this one, but you never called it. So please call me back when um, when you have the time. Let's try and go and create so that it works instead. Now we've proved that it failed. Now we need to go into the flow diagram here just to get an idea about what I'm actually doing. I'm expecting that right now, this was the first test, that when we create a location, it should call default validation on the iLocation validator. Now the second test I'm doing right now is when I create a location, I expect that I add, call the add function on the iLocation repository inside my location service. So let's try and go to the location service and do that. So I'll jump into my location service right here, the actual implementation. And in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, when you call create, I also want you to call the location repository. Now notice that is not here right now. So we need to make a local variable for that. So let's add that up here. Let me show you a small trick right here, location repository. Uh, what I want to do is I want to make this in a one liner. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to use just a double question mark saying if this guy is actually null, then throw an exception. And um, I can then do this in a one liner instead of having this if statement in here. It's just a small thing I know, but it's it's the possibility if you guys want to kind of make the code uh, one liners, then you have this possibility. I'll make a local repository, location repository available here now. And that means that when I've called the first function right here, I can call a second function called add where I pass in the location like this. And now the unit test should pass because step one, when I call the create function is to kind of validate my location. Step two in the flow is to then call the add function. And that's the two first steps that we're doing right now. So we should be happy. By the way, it also says you can make these read only. It's a okay with me if you want to. So let's just do it. There we go. Now we have them read only and let's rerun our unit tests to see if we are now green and we can continue our work. Now you need to notice that right now I am not implementing these methods. I'm just making the contract. So I'm only calling the interface for the repository and notice again, the add function not just works. So next lesson or soon, we're going to actually start adding real code inside the add function because right now, as I said, it's just an interface that has an add method right now. So of course it's not going to actually execute any code right now, but slowly we're building the structure. And again, we're doing a test driven. So everybody's happy. Um, and there we go. Now we have a beautiful new business flow test. See you next time. Have fun.